you, you talked there briefly about some athletes responding a lot better to different types of exercises. So how do you identify that when you're working with an athlete? Because you're going to give them a certain range of exercises up front and obviously you don't know how they're going to respond. So how do you end up drilling into, okay, this is the type of exercise and this is the type of you know, set and rep that you need to do of that particular exercise to get X outcome? Yeah, so it's, uh, the most objective way that I've been able to do it is we do what's called a, a false velocity profile. And we have uh, a series of tests that have been um, research-based, particularly a researcher by the name of uh, Jimenez Riez. He's produced a lot of research in this space. And Where's he from? I think he's from South America. Okay, um, yeah. Very exotic name. He's, yes. he's done some fantastic research over the last uh, probably decade um, of how we can best increase power in athletes and determine whether you need to do that through a pathway of giving them more strength work or whether we need to give them more velocity work, meaning you're, you're in the gym, but you're trying to move quickly rather than lifting heavy. Um, so we do this force velocity profile test, and, and, and one way you can do it is through getting your athlete jumping with a different series of, of weights, and it would be body weight, and then you sort of start adding on weight on their back with a, with a barbell. Wow. And we would measure their um, force and v- velocity uh, that they're producing um, through these different testing conditions. You have about six to seven conditions. And f- through that and a very big equation that was uh, published in that research by Jim and is, is we can determine uh, what type of relationship the athlete has between their quickness of movement and their force of movement, how much force they can produce. And when you look at that relationship graphically, we can see whether an athlete is more relying on the fact that they can produce high amounts of force, but not quickly. Mm. Or, and we can see athletes that are really good at uh, producing power based on moving quickly, but not producing much force and so you look at you look at what way the athlete is actually leaning towards and then again through that research we can plug uh, your findings into another equation and it will tell us uh, whether the athlete is uh, swinging too far one way or the other whether they're producing relying too much on force or too much on quickness and you would have seen this on a bike you see some athletes who are producing the really high cadence to produce power Mm. and there's other athletes who will just grind their gear and they're producing they're relying more on their force output rather than the velocity of movement to produce a certain power. So we can identify objectively what the athlete then needs. So if they're a real uh, velocity-based athlete, we'll say, okay, they can move quickly. They've got that down pat, but they're not producing much force. So let's give them some heavier strength exercises in the gym. Conversely, gee, this athlete's really strong and we can see they can producing a lot of force, but they're not good at moving quickly. Um, so we can improve their power uh, rather than head down this force pathway, they've already mastered that. Why don't we get them trying to move quicker in the gym and then we're going to have this harmonious balance between their ability to produce high force at a, a quick rate and then we should get a power improvement. So that's how I would do it objectively of selecting what exercises are suitable. Uh, the other one is you would do injury screening tests and making sure you're not giving a- an exercise to an athlete that would injure them. It's mm. very important and there's certain um, functional tests that we can do in athletes to make sure that we we are ticking the boxes with respect to protecting them in the gym. The other one is uh, the goals of the athlete. There's no point trying to get the athlete uh, strong and muscular and increase quadricep size if they want to get leaner and smaller for you know they see themselves as a, a climber perhaps in the team with, with with respect to their role so it's important you sort of look at those overarching factors in there um and then the other one to touch down is how do we know what's beneficial for the athlete for an exercise well it's something that they enjoy okay and uh to tie that in to cycling you know i've given exercise to athletes i'm like hey based on the research based on the anecdotal evidence that i'm seeing here this is working quite well as an exercise for producing x result I can prescribe it to the athlete, but they'll tap me on the shoulder and be like, that actually feels terrible. I feel, right. I feel uncomfortable. I feel goofy. It's awkward. Um, it might be painful. You know, oh, it's going to be pain in the knees. Cool. That's not the right exercise for you. Even though everything on paper is indicative that it could work, if that's your response to it, I'm not going to leave you on that for six weeks because you're going to become to do detest it. You might start skipping it. You mm. might start lying to me and telling me that you've done it when you haven't because you're worried about hurting my feelings. So, you know, it's important that we have that relationship with the individual athlete um, and make sure, you know, the best exercise is often the one that they'll enjoy the most yes. rather than the one most scientifically proven uh, to have the result you're after. Yes. And, you know, you've got to, that's where sort of art meets science and that human factor comes into it. 